Well, great to see you, Mark. Fantastic. Thanks so much for joining us. It's very exciting to uh, speak today to a luminary of the industry. Every top 10, every top 100, you're in, you know, let's be honest. And, and how you balance that with the four kids, the two dogs, and, you know, everything else you do, the half marathons, I don't really know. But it's lovely to speak to you. Thanks very much for joining us today. Um, so I'm going to kick off by asking about this um, very big pitch that you've just been through. I mean, I know you've only been in the, in the role at NetWest for a few months now, and already you've, you've kicked off with this enormous media pitch and uh, across the whole of the business. And in fact, I know that eccentrically just before that, you did a big pitch as well. So you, you, you're obviously a pitch meister, and, and I'm interested <laughs> to know what the sort of, here are your lessons. What, what is the, the Mark Jobling secret of uh, pitch success? What, how do you run a great pitch? Oh, God, secret of pitch success. Um... I mean, first, first of all, being clear about what you want, and what you're yeah. trying to achieve. And for me, it's never about money. Like it's you don't, the cheapest is a bit like, isn't it? You pay peanuts, you get monkeys. Um, it's about you know, being absolutely clear. And what we wanted was value creation. So integration, data led value creation for the business. And that comes in multiple ways, because ultimately the challenge we've got is growth, which has been the case for all the businesses I've worked in the last few years. So absolute clarity on what you're looking for in terms of outcome. Um, we live or die by the quality of the relationship. So it's people. And that's the je ne sais quoi, I would say. It's the thing that, you know, which actually is hardest over Zoom, is getting to know people in chemistry. And so, you know, does it work for you from a, have you got shared vision? Have you got shared values? So outcome and people are the two big things. But at the heart was data, integration performance i guess of what we were really looking for to drive better yeah. value creation for the business yeah and on that kind of scale because it's always everyone always says and i know sort of you know first experience that the, the most difficult thing about a pitch is that you know you, you it's an it's a it's an artificial construct for relationships exactly. and as you say you know it's all about relationship in the end so do you do you kind of do particular kind of workshops or kind of big sessions where you get to know people really well in, yeah. those, in those times we did i mean chemistry you did chemistry sessions yes. but also get into you know what's your um policy on dni you know yes. how do you retain yes. talent what's going right. on with your talent yes you know, here's a couple of sort of you know thought questions how would you approach it how do you think yes. about it yes. and have we got a similar view on the world and so yeah we ran a number and in both pitches we did the same actually to go help me get to know you your agency your culture your ethos and actually how does that fit with what we're trying to achieve just sort of moving on then to to sort of corporate cultures really because you know you, you you've got this um fantastic array of, of of businesses that you've been involved with over the years and you know everything from the sort of university of unilever through to you know, a lot of fmcg with cadbury's and sarah lee and the bird's eye and then obviously into utilities and now into financial services and and so are there sort of in your view they're always incredibly different businesses lots of different scales and international and national but are there commonalities there are there sort of lessons that the, you, you can cut across everything and 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 I suspect that my supplementary question really is, what's your favourite? <laughs> other, other, than the existing oh. one, other than the existing one, but let's kind of start with the commonalities anyway. <laughs> it's like saying, which of your children do you Yeah, I know, next? exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. What does it? So uh, I sort of earned my um, stripes in Unilever. Like I go, do you know, they, and I look back at my time in Unilever and I go, God, they were slick. Like, uh, and you appreciate it more as you move out. So I think from a marketing perspective, yeah. you know, I felt like I went to the Oxford University of Marketing because yeah, yeah. brand, customer, it's just in the DNA and the fabric of the organisation and they invest in people. Yes. So I came out of Unilever as a, a well-trained, I guess, FMCG marketeer. Yeah. I, as I moved, I, the things that have been consistent for me are I've got to care about the brand and the brands and the category like I can't I couldn't work for a business that I just didn't emotionally connect to yeah. um so I've got to care about the brands and think there's a job to be done so generally my theme has been it's a business that's trying to transform or change or really do something different right. so I care about the brands increasingly with purpose like what are we here to do beyond just make money because everyone wants to make money and grow yeah. um people and culture where do I think I can go and fit in and make a difference? So the choices have generally been driven by, 
I like you. You know, people, I always say people work for people that don't work for businesses, but you know, if you meet people, you go, it feels like you're really trying to change the world. Mm-hmm. So I've constantly moved into businesses where I've gone, there's a marketing job to be done. I feel like culturally there's a really good fit mm-hmm. and they're trying to do something interesting and they've got a big change agenda. And I would say I've learned something different in every place I went. So Unilever, Oxford University of Marketing came out feeling like I was a you know, trained, qualified marketeer. Sarah Lee actually was about commercial because you were, in Unilever, you've got a man who can. You don't go below gross margin. So you've basically got resources and suddenly you go into a smaller business and go, oh my God, I'm talking about pensions and brand strategy and slow moving obsoletes and Tesco's dumping. Like, <laughs> um, but you basically go, how do you make your money? And that, I think, which is a theme I'd definitely come back to, you've got to be credible as a business woman stroke man to be a credible marketeer in business. So I learned that in Sarah Lee. Um, you know, Cadbury was all about innovative, creative marketing. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were absolutely on a roll. We were trying, confidence breeds confidence, trying stuff, experimenting. Mm-hmm. You know, the business was really rocking, really. Mm-hmm. Um, private equity, bird's eye, hard yards. I always say it's a bit like national service. I came out stronger for it, but yeah. I definitely learned cash is king. <laughs> cash is king. How do you justify your existence? You know, you've got a flog to a private equity that it's a good idea to double the investment in marketing. And then British Gas was actually the first foray into non-consumer goods. And I think you know, the principles of what we do are the same. Do I understand my customer and, and their lives and our brands in the context of their lives? How are they consuming media and products? And how do I get the right content in the right context to get them to emotionally engage and and be relevant? And and consumer goods, that's in the fabric of the business because you don't own the relationship. You know, you you have to create products and services against need that then actually you've got to advertise the hell out of because you've got to pull the customer through. Whereas in services, actually, I think the categories have been quite lazy because customers didn't go anywhere in utilities no one ever left you you, know, you have 92 percent um retention because no one ever switched provider when i joined but that world is gone you know digital switching sides so you, we've got to work much harder and i think my learning moving into regulated service industry is every single touch point matters mm-hmm. it's the engineer visit it's the telephone call you know it, the advertising actually is a small part of what we do you have to deliver customer branded experiences so I've learned something from all of them quite different have I got a favorite child no (laughs) I've got I've got I mean if I was you really push me I would say probably the the play the most fun working on links because okay. we did loads of stuff getting under You've the skin. You've got great awards at can and stuff on there. Oh, my God. Amazing. What do young teenage boys yeah. want? I had so yeah. much fun. We yeah. went clubbing in Ibiza and we yeah. all masqueraded as understanding our customer. And then probably Cadbury because, yeah. you know, we were literally Culture. experimenting, trying stuff. I gained about a stone in six months, which wasn't quite <laughs> so good. But in terms of, you know, fun and enjoying them. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I've loved them all for very different reasons. I've come out learning something different and building and consolidating as I've gone. And do you think that if you were, if you were recommending, as I'm, I'm sure you do when you get people coming into the industry and into graduates or, or just people are joining, do you, that range of experience do you recommend that people generally speaking should move around they've spent a few years in lots of different places do you think you ultimately become a richer uh more versatile marketer as a result of that so my current team no stay where you are yeah. honestly yeah. consolidate <laughs> no my honest view is of course i think the you need to um have done you know creative and commercial roles because i think yeah. one of the challenges in our industry is around how do we become increasingly commercial in, in measuring the value of the outcome, but actually creativity yeah. sells for sure. So yes. being rounded to understand how to measure value is important. So I would say, you, you know, consolidate have done rational brands, emotional brands, different categories. So that's my personal experience because yes, the principles are the same. You know, we've got, as I said, understand the customer and all the rest of it, but you learn a lot about you know, how money needs to get managed, how customers behave, and, and it is different by category. So I, I think breadth of experience, and particularly when you go to work in businesses where you need to dig deep, 
Yes. So lots of businesses, you know, it's great when you're growing, but people don't fix the roof when the sun's shining. Yes. Actually, when it becomes hard yards yes. is when a business is in trouble and you need to be able to dig deep on experiences and, and yes. having been through, you know, how to do some stuff. So, yeah, I would say definitely consolidate experience makes you a better marketeer. I know recently in campaign, you said that, that we need to brands to shift to, towards a more broad, intuitive and empathetic messaging, a right brain reset is kind of what you talked about. What are the biggest obstacles to that? Because it absolutely is right, of course, and, and there's so much evidence and we know from so many places that it's this absolute, this kind of, you know, like this, this, this kind of linear and lateral kind of balanced thinking, diagonal thinking, whatever you want to call it. But what, what, why is that not happening? What are the obstacles to that? Uh, short termism, I think right. is a real issue. I actually think digital is the rise of digital as a channel is an issue. Right. I think we've become obsessed with numbers and last click and, and yeah. actually it's all about measurement. Um, and businesses I see are increasingly under pressure to deliver commercial outcomes. You know, the rise of procurement, which is all about money and, and squeezing more margin out and resources spread ever more thin. So I think there's a, there is an obsession with return, which, you know, is not wrong. But actually, I think that is driving a numbers game and a, right. and a digital click through game. And I, and I think in the channel, it's, you know, you've got to think and really work hard around context and content. And there's still a lot of content pushed out there. You know, in, in the old days, you would obsess about centre break, Coronation Street, quality of TVRs, GRPs, where I am in the magazine. And, and now we're shoving content out there without any real thought around the context. And so I, I, I think the pressure is increasingly on the business and marketing to do short-term return and show click-through rates and you know, performance metrics. So that's driving the behavior. Um, and, and, I, and I think it's you know, back to, have we got the capability and the understanding of the system and really all the fact base says, you know, we know creativity sells, you, you know, I sit on the IP effectiveness council and you just, the spades and spades of, you know, data and, um, and, and therefore I think we just got to work much harder as an industry yes. to change that, but you need people in the industry who are really advocating that and selling that dream to the business. Yes. And the only way you get business buy-in is to talk the language of the business and be able to prove that, you know, creativity does work in the context of all the channels coming together. Yeah, you're right. Again, it's it's about the bridging, isn't it? It's understanding yeah. how to talk commerciality, but at the same time, understanding the role of creativity. It's yeah. a, and, and I, it's, a, it's a challenge, isn't it? So, so in the world of financial services, I mean, you know, it's true that banks often don't get fantastic press. I mean, but there's a lot of work I know that, you know, and you, you've talked about purpose to champion potential and help people thrive as being NetWest sort of purpose. And, and you know, then that that's absolutely uh you know I, I know something that's very dear to your heart but is that is that therefore one of the biggest challenges you faced in in your career because you know that's really really tough isn't it in, in an environment like financial services for lots of historical reasons really is this is this your biggest challenge ever sort of thing yes i know my biggest challenge ever was moving from research into marketing because right, that's okay. a whole different language okay, all right we'll talk about that yeah that's good yeah. I, I think for a marketer is it a challenge yes it is because yeah. i mean the media never going to write good stuff about you you know, you know everybody wants a kicking boy don't they? and in yes, british indeed. gas i mean we were the lightning rod of all things bad utility whether it was us or not they put our logo up in the media so i think the challenge is for a business to orientate from what I call a product push organization to be a customer centric, you know, how are we really adding value in customers' lives? And when you are a multi thousand organization, you know, you're trying to move an oil tanker that actually you start with purpose, but fundamentally it doesn't work unless it all works mm -hmm. and you're actually living the dream. Yes. So I think it, it just takes time. So, you know, we're really committed, we know it'll make the difference. Interesting when you look at empirical evidence, there's not a lot of real empirical evidence, which is a challenge for the industry around purpose drives, you know, yes. sales and value. And yes. um, but it's about show, not tell. You know, mm. we have to be delivering the goods underneath it because yes. that's where your people believe and that's where your customers believe. So it's a challenge because it's multifaceted, it's complicated, you know, you've got businesses which are hardwired around product. And therefore, you need to work really hard to change the 
I mean, culture is an output, but change the processes and the thinking and the inputs to get a different output. And you have to really deliver the goods because you know, you've got nowhere to hide in today's world. Yes. You know, with a, in a digital, fully transparent, um, you know, you can't say one thing and do another because you'll get found out really, really quickly. So, you know, the marketing challenge is it's everything you do. And actually the perception in a lot of businesses um, and financial services is not different. Marketing is at the end of the food chain rather than actually in the consumer world, then consumer goods world, you are the business. Mm. So you've got to earn your right to the table, you know, show that you're not just the advertising comms team, but you are actually the thing that's going to help you think about customer experience in a branded context mm. across the estate. And therefore you need to be inputting on what's the branch experience, you know, what's the uniforms, what's the conversation through uh -huh. to, See you know, how do you generate great campaigns and activation that are the satellite that really illuminate everything the business wants to stand for? Mm -hmm. And by the way, make sure you've got the products and propositions to back it up. Yes. So, you know, the role of marketing is tough. I mean, it's become, you know, if I think back, you know, your number one challenge 30 years ago was Coronation Street Centre Brick, you know, and everybody, 90% of the population went, hey, you know, there's the, you know, the dove ad. Whereas now you've got platforms and data and channel and customer, you know, we're in a much more multifaceted, complex world. And actually, customer is king. You know, they vote with their feet now if we get it wrong. So let's now move, move across to you and your career plan and your and where you got to where you got to in life, because I know that you started out, you know, did chemistry, you did a PhD uh, and uh, which is very, very impressive. Um, so did you have a plan? I mean, you know, talk me through kind of going from chemistry, PhD into marketing. You know, it's obviously a human oh. science, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no plan. So I did a PhD to delay the agony of work because I was living with a load of guys who were doing a longer course than me. So I was like, oh, I don't know, be a student for a bit longer. Yeah. And then started in Unilever in R&D. And I got hooked into marketing because I did a special project with a marketeer, which was um, take a techie, take a marketeer. Can you increase the cycle time of product to market? So I'd be mixing it up on the bench. She'd be creating the concepts. And actually, we went to talk to some like real people, customers. And I just, I loved it. I was like, wow. So I said, um, I want to move to marketing. And Ian Lieber said, but you're technical. Technical people can't do marketing, darling. You know, you're not creative. It's about creativity. It's a black art. And I was like, okay. Anyway, luckily for my um, absolute longer term career, there was a woman, Sylvia Lagnardo, who I'll be forever grateful to, who was the brains behind Dove, um, said, you know what, I did come in, I'll give you a shot. I think she was slightly mad, Steve, if I'm really honest. I had no <laughs> marketing skills. They chucked me in as senior brand manager on Dove deodorant, it's looking after potential. Europe. Yeah. I mean, advertising, innovation, and PL accountable for the UK. I mean, I knew literally. Wow. It's the name of the distant PR impressive. and promotion. But, you know, you obviously incredibly here. impressive. You obviously did something. Well, I've, <laughs> I've, I've, you know, it's common sense. What we do is common sense. And there's so much fluff and stuff around it. But, yeah, it's not really that hard. But, you know, you, if you're interested in people and you love some data, because I, where I've always found is if you understand your customer and you've got the substance, substantiation, no one can argue with that, actually, because that's about you bringing the outside in. So, so when I feel like I've either run out of road or it's time to do something different, stuff's just presented itself. And I've gone, do you know what? Is there a challenge? Do I like the brand? And then off I go again. I love so that. no game plan, just constantly. Yeah. And I am my own biggest self-improvement program, always going, that. how did I make it better? What can I do differently? Which to my team's detriment i think is sometimes i've got to really watch that because you know it's not always great to get to the end of something and say that was great but how can we make it even better so i need to you know but I, I just i love learning i love i'm curious i just love learning brilliant well actually that's an interesting sort of segue to the learning because you know i think that as you know the dma you know we're all about in driving force of intelligent marketing and intelligent yeah. marketing is is as we know as you're saying before it's this kind of joined up isn't it? The creativity the tech the data all working together and we talk about the driving force because ultimately there's people like yourself, you know, people who drive, drive forward. And, and I know that at NatWest, you with your people's pleasure, you've been fantastic about developing a learning culture and you do a lot of work with us at the DMA and the IDM, which we are incredibly grateful to. I, I think that, do you find that almost that 
this self-improvement, this constant learning, this constant upskilling. I mean, is that in a sense the key now? I mean, it always has been, but is that increasingly the key to great being a great marketeer going forward? I, I think uh, so. Yes, I think there's a you need to be constantly checking yourself. I mean, I think when you start thinking you're the customer, yes. you're dead. Like you know, I'm going to, uh, and the world is moving so quickly. So I think constant learning, constant test and learn. Right. Because yeah, the world's complicated too, and and we need to be constantly challenging ourselves, whether it's uplift tests or regional tests, or mm-hmm. but constantly looking at um, you know how can we do it differently, better, and so for me it's curiosity and and this constant drive to go it's complicated. How do we sort? It's a graphic equalizer. How do we make sure we understand how the bits work and constantly check in and. You know, I, I met a guy, I had to do an intro, I was like the, whatever, the hostess with the most us, and we had one of these guest speakers, and it was an Olympic rower who came right. to talk to us, and um, I was chatting to him in the break, and I said, you know what, you do all these business speeches now, you've got your gold medal, what do you see as the difference between business and sport? And he said, the single biggest difference is in sport, you crave feedback, crave right. it, every single training session, how could I have done it better, what did I do wrong, you know, how can I constantly up my game? Right. In business, we're afraid of it because, yeah. you know, if someone comes to you and says, Stephen, I've just got a bit of feedback for you. You know, your body goes, oh, my yes. God, because like, yes. it's never going to be easy. It's a fantastic job, it tends to be. Yes. And this is yes. what you need to work on. So, yeah. so, and I do think, you know, test and learn capability, mm-hmm. you know, productionized in business and this constant curiosity. Yes. And I go, the reason God gave us two ears and a mouth is we should listen more than we speak and understand and, and yeah. we don't. So, you know, yes, I do think it is the key. We haven't got the answers. Yeah, I'm a believer in a sense, really plonky in servant leadership. I go, my job is to make your job easier. What do I need to do? Because all the answers lie within and I am 200,000 feet. You're in the trenches every day. Tell me what will make the difference because people who are doing the work know where it's not working. Yes. And actually, the problem is the business that escalates the decision to the most senior person who, quite mm-hmm. frankly, knows the least about it. And it's interesting because, I mean, if it, maybe it's an unfair analogy, but just going back to chemistry, the concept of experimentation, test and learn, yeah. constantly upgrading, constantly knowing something is key. Isn't it? And I think yeah, that, there's... you know, and, and I, I, I never quite understand why some companies almost view training and development as almost like an add on where it's a fundamental part, isn't yeah. it? Constantly upgrading people and, and, and improving your quality. So no, that, that's that's brilliant that you so supportive let, let me now talk about you know you're a very strong advocate for championing women uh in the workplace and i know centrica you know you had the women's network and and you know obviously that that is is was i know incredibly successful so what is uh, your your if you like your advice that you would give to young female marketeers today you know if there is some broader advice about how to achieve and be successful because it's obviously something that sadly still needs developing and nurturing it shouldn't be but it does and and you know what what advice do you do you offer there i completely agree that it needs developing and nurturing and i'm a big fan of inclusion and and so one of my concerns today is actually we're we're segmenting it into individuals so we're talking BAME and women and LGBT and I'm going actually the bigger agenda for me is inclusion regardless of who what where when but so uh but women specifically I would say at some level, I think we're our own worst enemy, Stephen. I think we, so take accountability. That's what I'd say. I'd say there's, there's no right and wrong. So, because I think people are quick to tell you whether when you're a mother, you know, you're putting a child in nursery or, you know, you've got a child mind or there is no right or wrong. So whatever works for you, make it work. Yes. But take accountability for your career and your development, because I think we don't ask enough. We don't speak up, you know, and there's loads of stats to say, you know, a guy looks at a job description and says, I've got 15% of the skills I'm going to apply. And a woman looks at it and says, I've got 85% and it's not right for me. And that's yeah. true. You know, men are more likely to go, give me a pay rise. Women won't, they'll accept it. And so uh, my big plea, and yeah, it's easier said than done, is take personal accountability, you know, and you go into bat. Because I think we think that, you know, the next job will come your way because the line manager will see you're brilliant. It doesn't happen like that. It doesn't. You've got to almost manage your manager into a place to say, what do I need to work on? Okay, if I work on this and I demonstrate that, have I done it? Yes, tick, right. This is what I've done, tick. And you almost 
not quite back them into a corner, but you take them to a place that said, you need to be helping me develop. I'm owning my development. And actually, you know, I've done everything you said. I'm now ready for the promotion and take some personal ownership of that because it doesn't happen. You know, people don't come and gift you promotions. I mean, it does, but I would say rarely. Actually, you know, be confident. Um, and yeah, do what works for you. There is no right or wrong answer. And don't beat yourself up because I think women are dreadful. And I'm definitely in this camp of going, I'm not, you know, I'm not good enough mother. I'm not doing enough at work. I'm not. And there's all the competing um, things for your attention and your energy. And it's tough. But, you know, everyone is doing the best they can. You're completely replaceable at work, whether we like it or not. You are not replaceable at home. And actually, you've got to get the balance right. But take some accountability and be clear about your own red lines. So what about if you're reinventing yourself then? Um, so what would you, if you weren't doing what you're doing at the moment, uh, what would you be doing? Would you be, you know, teaching chemistry at uh, uh, Oxford or, or would you be, uh, would you be on the Great Bake Off? <laughs> I'd be on the, I, honestly, I've said I would have a little cake shop. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, was going, I got yeah. into making big style of cake making um because my uh, the eldest boy's got a nut allergy and so you turn right. up in tesco's and it'd be like the disney princess cake for his birthday so i start making cakes Brilliant. and i love it it's my go-to don't okay. think about anything and i've done all sorts of cake carving so i would actually open a little shop where i sold handmade cakes and everyone could come in for a chat and a cup of tea so i'd love okay. I'd love to do that at some point i'd love to do my own thing where i didn't have a boss that i could just chat to people and create and where would that be where would that cake shop be and what kind of cake would you be selling it would be norfolk so okay. i've now become no. a um and somewhere near the sea i love the beach nice. i thought that's my northern yeah. thing i love to walk along the beach nice. um and i'd be selling all sorts actually but i'd be small and large a bit right. of handmade muffins cupcakes and right. then some larger I'm creations <laughs> i'm there i tell you let me know and i'll be there <laughs> obviously we wouldn't want to lose you from the world of marketing but anyway it'd be nice to, when you do decide to do that and so so my sort of final question really is and and you you touched on this it sounds rather morbid to talk about an epitaph but more in terms of you know when you're when you're getting the obe or whatever it is what do you want basically you know what do you want people to say i would say great mum that made a difference in customers' lives in some way, shape, or form. You know, I think that's important to me is the values and the legacy I leave for my kids and actually work. You know, I want, I want to make the world a better place. And whether that's young women coming through, mm. you know, helping the financial capability of customers, but I think that's most important to me is I raise some great kids and they're having great lives and they're mm. happy and healthy. Brilliant. That's a fantastic answer, and it's it's a it's, it's they always say if you get that bit right, then everything else flows from that, doesn't it? You know, <laughs> going out to talk about inputs and outputs. If the family, if the bedrock's good, then then you know everything else flows, which is fantastic. Well, well, that's a brilliant, brilliant note to leave us on today. Well, thank you so much, Mark, to talk to me, talk to me, and I really, really enjoyed it. It's been fantastic, and there's so many great insights there. So many lots of things I've written down. That I'm going to remember. As always, I know you 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 crystallise things brilliantly always, and, and and thank you so much for doing that. Um, and I look forward to the, seeing you at the cake shop very very soon. My have pleasure. A, have a, I'll try not to poison you. Thank you very much. <laughs> have, a, have a good day. Great to speak to you. Have a good See day. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.